Brick fans, this is Dave from Brick 101, and today I'm reviewing the McFarlane Toys Five Nights at Freddy's set control module. This set is number 12827, contains 290 pieces, and retails for about $35 in the United States. There's a link in the description where you can buy this set online. Many thanks to McFarlane Toys for sending me a copy of this set for free to review. I had just found my own copy of this set when I got the copy from them, so that means I have an extra copy. So I will be doing a giveaway, as I have with other Five Nights at Freddy's sets. So there is a link in the description of this video where you can go and enter the contest. You will need to enter an email address, be at least 13 years or older, and live in the United States. The winners from last month's contest, which was for the three smaller Five Nights at Freddy's sets, were Tan Man, Pug Man, and Marissa. And they have already been contacted via email. Um, I always contact winners via email, so be sure to check the email address you use to enter the contest. You can enter this contest between now and April 1st.
First up, let's look at the Ballora figure. So this figure, I would say, is 80% great and 20% weight? What? Um, so I think they did a great job with the head mold. Looks spot on to Ballora. Great printing on the eyes, the cheeks, the mouth, the hair. All of that looks great. The um, tiara or gear that comes out of the top of her head is a separate piece that works really well uh, coming in and out. The arms look good, the hands look good. The torso is pretty good. They definitely should have had those blue spots further down on the front of her torso, but that's not too terrible. The bottom half of the torso with the skirt is a very different type of piece than the rest of the um, figure. It's It just has a different feel as plastic and um, the color on it is just not great and it just looks out of place to everything if you look up close at it. Um, yeah, it just kind of looks dirty. Uh, I mean, I get that what they were trying to do here with having the body thinner and having the skirt all as one piece uh, is difficult, so they had a challenge in front of them, but it just definitely looks out of place with the rest of the figure. Uh, then we moving down, uh, the top of the legs are fine. Uh, the mid legs where they have the laces on it, uh, the painting on that area just looks a little messy. Um, just, I, I get what they were trying to go for, it just comes across um, a little shoddy compared to their really high standards everywhere else. Um, the bottom of the feet are really great though. So she actually is kind of up on her tiptoes like she would be in the game. So that's a really nice detail. So pretty good job on Ballora, but just a couple uh, weird choices. Next up, let's look at Jump Scare Funtime Foxy. So this is an interesting choice that they made to do a Jump Scare edition with the face plates open. Um, I think it's a nice compromise uh, versus trying to actually have face plates that would articulate at this scale, which would be basically impossible. Uh, so this is a nice way that you can actually, you know, have the regular and the Jump Scare version. And it'll be interesting to see if they do that for some of the other sister locations location animatronics in future sets. We'll see. Um, so most of this figure is exactly the same as the previous Funtime Foxy. Um, basically the feet up to the torso is the same and then the head is different. Two really minor differences is that the um, finger painting on the nails of Funtime Foxy is a little bit different um, versus Jump Scare Funtime Foxy. Uh, so it's just a darker color, so that's a choice. Uh, not sure what that's supposed to mean or represent. Uh, the other thing is that Funtime Foxy normal version has gray teeth, which is actually inaccurate to the game, but I didn't notice until I saw the jump scare version with white teeth and was curious about why the te were, teeth were white, and then I realized it should have been white teeth all along. Uh, but now if you like swap these in and out, like in an animation or something to make it look like the face plates opened, uh, while also the teeth and uh, nails change color too. Just a weird side effect. Um, as for how the face plates connect, it's actually two pieces that stick into the back of the head. Uh, you have to be careful with these because they are kind of fragile pieces, but they come out like that. Um, so then you can have like a totally uh, almost bald head Funtime Foxy, which is kind of cute in its own creepy way. Hey, Ballora, do you like my new haircut? Get it? <laughs> I'm ignoring you because I'm dancing. La 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 la. Man, I can't get anyone to comment on my haircut. Lame. We have Biddy Bab. One of the creepiest things in all of Five Nights at Freddy's, which is saying something because it's a game series full of creepy things, but something about the size of Bitty Bab, it's small and they run around, uh, just creeps me out even more than other things. Uh, but this is a great job representing it. It's all one piece and there's no articulation, so it just kind of poses in this um, pose like this. But the eyes look great, the face painting, all the details on it are really well done. Um, so I think this is a really nice uh, version of Bitty Bab and um, ready to creep people out. The one thing that's off about Bitty Bab is the size. 
The bitty babs shown next to baby really only come up to the top of her legs. Uh, this one comes up to her shoulder height. Um, so while it's still smaller than baby, it should probably be closer to the height of the little puppet things that hang on the wall of the circus control, um, like the one over on the left there. Cora, will you tell me a story? Okay. Once upon a time, there was a little bitty bab. Like me! That's right, just like you. But this bitty bab was a bad bitty bab. That's why I called it bitty bad. Bitty bad, oh no. This bitty bad would interrupt Ballora while she was dancing, like you are now. Get out of here, I'm dancing. La 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 la, dance dance. Now let's take a look at the set itself. Um, so this is definitely one of the most interesting rooms that McFarlane Toys has done in their Five Nights at Freddy's series. It actually kind of has like walls that go up almost to a ceiling and lots of details on the sides. There's interesting angles um, and lots of little doodads. Um, first and foremost, you know, the big fan is obviously a notable feature and you can actually rotate the propeller. Um, nice detail, looks great. Um, there's a lot of detail everywhere in this thing. Um, starting with the floor, you've got um, printing on those tiles to make the uh, black lines going through. We've got some of our uh, great pieces, which we've gotten in various sets now. Um, most of the detail in this is actually stickers, so those drawers are stickers. Uh, the TV screens up there, the lights are all stickers. There's lots of details in here. On the left, you can see on top of the shelves, we've got uh, the three uh, creepy little faces. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, uh, we think. Uh, then you've got the baby clock. Uh, face behind them, um, somewhat obscured by wires. I will say I'm glad that their wires this time actually connect into a piece as opposed to just hanging off of something. So that's an improvement from previous wires. Uh, got a video camera up there, some more sticker detail with the speaker in the back, this uh, sculpted bobblehead uh, thingamabob over there, and we've got the entered mask up there though it's missing the party hat. Here's a look at some of those details from inside the room. Uh, the heads, the bobblehead thing, the mask, and the clock face. Uh, just so you can see some of the detail and color better rather when they're hidden back in there. So uh, McFarland Toys is really great about making really custom details like this for whatever the set needs to be super authentic. Um, so they definitely shine in that respect uh, in this set as well as getting all the colors and shape right as well. So overall, McFarland Toys did a phenomenal job with this set. And while it's not an official connection, uh, you could take Lolbit's head from the private room set, put some putty on the back, and stick it up here on the wall if you want to recreate uh, that sort of Easter egg from when it pops up there in place of the entered mask. Looks pretty great, actually. And since Ennard's mask and hat are removable, uh, you can take Ennard from the scooping room set and take the mask off and hat off and put it up there as opposed to the much smaller mask that comes with this set um, if you want to get the hat in there uh, and get the size kind of spot on to what Ennard actually looks like. Hello, children. Today we'll be learning about time. Can anyone tell me what time it is right now? Ooh, ooh, I know. Is it spring time? No, but that was a good joke because spring things are important in this game series. No, it's time to learn about time. Time, 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 time. Wow, learning. Overall, this is a pretty good McFarlane toy set. Uh, I think the actual build itself is one of the best they've done in terms of the room. Uh, it's stable, it's got interesting details. The figures are pretty great overall. Uh, Jump Scare Funtime Foxy works really well. Bitty Bab is great, and Ballora is mostly there. Um, just has a couple things that look a little 
less than their usual standard of awesomeness and perfection, but still pretty good overall. So um, really no complaints about this set. It's a good value for the money, and if you love Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, uh, I can't recommend this set any more highly.